and welcome in, everybody. Glad you're with us. MLB The Show has action out of the AL Central. It's the Chicago White Sox and the Detroit Tigers. First pitch coming at you right after the break. Just about set to go now. And starting in this one, Casey Mines. And Singy, it's unique these days, but he's more of a pitch to contact type of guy. Yeah, Boogie, he doesn't rely too heavily on the strikeout. He knows he needs to miss barrels, get some soft contact, let the defense do work behind him. And I think a guy like that can keep a good tempo, don't give hitters time to adjust or think. They can move through a ball. Boots it. And he's going to make it to first, and we'll see how they score it. Hard to tell exactly what went wrong right there. That was a fairly routine ground ball, but he just couldn't get it to stick in the glove. Might have taken his eye off it a little early, but regardless, we're going to have to work around that error. Andrew Vaughn now. And a foul ball. Righty delivers. Cuts on it and misses. That's a strikeout. Some high cheese for strike three. Typically that high fastball, if it's close to the top of the strike zone, a hitter, if he's prepared for it, can get to it. But that one just had that little jump at the end, which indicates there's a good spin rate on it, and it didn't decrease in velocity as that hitter's internal clock would expect it to, and that's why you see the swing and miss. And now it's Luis Robert. The pitch. Fam on the move. There's a swing and a drive. That's back there. And gone. He made him pay for that one. It's his eighth home run of the year. It's 2 nothing. That pitch looked like the splitter, but normally doesn't stay that high in the zone. The bottom falls out, at least to bring it around belt level, but that one just stayed up, and with that kind of velocity, it's going to get hit really hard, as it did right there. Now it's Paul DeYoung up to the plate. That one down the line, and foul ball. One down, base is empty. Swings through that, and it's a strikeout. Two gone now. That's about as nasty of a splitter as you'll come across, especially in terms of movement. I mean, that thing tumbles out of his hand and just drops off the table at the last moment. If he keeps it down, it's just so tough to put wood on. And here is Sosa to the plate. Two down, nobody on. Up and in, three and one. Right through there for a strike. Two outs, base is empty. Swing and a base hit. I don't know how he's able to shoot that pitch the other way and still put something on it. That pitch was inside, and he let it get really deep. So pretty incredible hands to fight it off and still get good wood on it. Now it's Andrew Benintendi to hit. Swing and a ball popped up. McKinstry settles underneath it. He's got it. And that is that. But two come across to score in the inning, courtesy of this two-run homer. It's now a 2-0 ball game. Back at Comerica Park, 
And on the mound today, Jonathan Cannon. And Chris, pitching on the road has not been particularly kind to him. Yeah, and you don't want to be too quick to say that he can't pitch on the road. Sometimes, you know, it's just a matter of luck. It's not having a feel. Difference between the bullpen mound to the mound Lead out up. there on the, the playing fire. field. Don't know what the it is, field. but I know this. He's got good enough stuff to overcome and Lead get it done on the road as well as at home. So we'll see what he's able to do in this one. Fouls one off. Two and two. Well, after scoring runs, this is where you're looking for that shutdown inning. Get that hot team back in there to swing the bats. Ground ball off the middle. That's a base hit. So, runner aboard to start the inning. Timing on the swing was good. Able to shoot the ball up the middle. Didn't square it up as much as he probably would have liked, but that's a good approach paying off. And now a chance to maybe get creative on offense with good speed on first. Next to hit, Wenzel Perez makes the grab one away. Let's take a check of the Tigers lineup. A really frustrating showing for them in their last game. Lots of traffic on the bases, but they left a ton of runners on base. Couldn't cash in their chances, Chris. They had plenty of chances. There's nobody to blame it on but themselves offensively. They just did a poor job converting in those situations. You have to figure out what's your plan going to be. Maybe watch some tape from the last game. Make the adjustments. So if you get those opportunities in this one, you've got a much better chance of scoring some runs. And the right-hander deals. Foul off left side. Veerlin at first, one gone. Fouled off again, and it remains three and two. The pitch. Ripped in the right field, base hit. Quick throw back in. Lead runner holds it second with one gone. Everything came together for him. Just a solid swing right there. Caught it out front and ripped it into the outfield for the base hit. Those always feel great. So first and second with one man gone. And up next for Detroit, Mark Canna. Kicks and fires. Swings and misses. And out two and two. One out. Runners at first and second. In the air out towards right center. Fam should have this one. Hauls it in for the out. Batting fifth. The third baseman. Gio Urshela to the plate. Well, lots of pitches thrown in this first inning. It's kind of that nightmare scenario for starting pitching. But you know what? It's still early enough. He can settle in. He can get some length if he just cleans up his mechanics a little bit. That's a base hit. Now a long throw home. It's offline. The run comes in. And it's a one-run game. Comes through with the RBI. That's about as textbook as it gets. Got his stride and load out of the way early. He stayed inside that ball and squared it up out front. Man, that was like he was in the cage hitting off a tee. And yeah, the batter now, Colt Keith. The pitch. Lifted in the air, right field. He's under it. Pulls it down and he makes the catch. And the inning is over. But the RBI single pushes across a run. And the home team down a run. New inning getting started. Here's the third baseman, Corey Jolts. Corey Jolts. Outside, two and one. Pretty easy to give up on that pitch right there. Started on the edge of the plate with the spin. You know it's going to finish well off the plate. And yeah, that's a little bit high. Ball three. Larry Bullard, our umpire behind the plate. 
But Bullard's got a pretty standard strike zone. Sometimes they'll have you guessing a little bit, but overall, well-respected umpire in the league. And that's ball too ball. high, ball four. Fans don't really understand the familiarity and relationship players and coaches have with umpires. I mean, you see them a lot. Yeah, but they're all out there trying to do their best and perform at a high level. So when you respect that, I think, over time, you can develop a relationship with them. In the air on the infield. Makes the grab one down. That was a good, hard fastball with some nice ride up in the zone right there. Hitter looked like he was on it, but I think that velocity at the end just beat him. Instead of a line drive or something hit deep, it's a pop-up and an easy out for the defense. Man at first, one away. Out into left center for a line drive base hit. Lead runner makes the turn at second. And they'll have runners at the corners after a one-out single. Put a pretty good jolt into that one. Great swing, nice balance, and weight transfer. And he got it to drop in out there in the deep part of the field. Here's Tommy Pham. 2-1 now. And a good eye there. Runners at the corners, one away. Here at the top of the second. And that's ball, ball four. four. Well, the stage has been set for this offense, Boo. It's all about creating opportunities, and this is one of them right here. So the bases are loaded here, one man gone. And next to hit for the Sox, Andrew Vaughn. And the righty deals. Late swing, fouled off. Well, all eyes on the double play ball in this spot. No better way to get out of this inning. Right-hander kicks, deals. Got him looking. Huge strike out there. Luis Robert now. You talk about elite defensive players, especially in the middle of the diamond, and this guy is at the top of the list. All loaded up. Dangerous hitter at the plate. That one is absolutely belted. One runs in. And it's off the out-of-town scoreboard. Now the second run is in. He's in there. It's 5-1. How about that? Clears the bases. A well-deserved double on a great swing. Got everything going on time. He stayed balanced and he squared it up about as well as you could possibly ask. Now the shortstop, Paul DeYoung. Runner breaks for third. Cut on and miss. Throw to third. Save. I think he surprised everyone in the ballpark, and especially the pitcher. Wasn't a great lead there, but when he took off, I think he caught him off guard. Nice job to get to third. Two outs. And one in scoring position. That's and that's outside. And the count's even at two. Two, two Two outs. Lifted to left center. Way back there. And that is gone. A gigantic blast. Home run number 15 on the year. And they add to their lead. It's 7-1. He absolutely feasts on right-handed pitching and devours that one for a homer. And you can see that's what he expects of himself. At bat after at bat, he's that confident. Knew what pitch he wanted to hit. Spent on some other pitches in this at bat. Was very patient. And it paid off. Here comes the skipper, and we're going to see a pitching change in this spot. Casey Mize is done. We'll be back in a minute with a new arm on the mound. New pitch.
pitcher for the Tigers, Mason Engler. I think it's got to be a little tough coming in out of the pen when your guys are trailing so big on the scoreboard. Just doesn't have the same intensity to it, but he's got to find a way because these batters count the same for his stats, obviously, regardless of the score. Lennon Sosa steps to the plate for the White Sox. And the pitch. No, that's the ball. That one fouled off two and two. Ripped on a line. Veerland makes the play and it's out number three. But they blow this one open with a big five run inning. Now to the bottom of the second. White Sox seven and the Tigers one. Justin Henry Malloy up now for the Tigers. No left fielder. Well, every pitcher wants run support, and having a lead is nice, but it can be challenging for some pitchers. I think keeping the mindset to attack instead of trying to be too fine and have too much finesse, go after hitters and get quick outs. In time, Devon. Leadoff man retired here in the second. Zach McKinstry up now for the Tigers. One out, base is empty. The ball next three. offering misses. Good and one. that's ball two. I can't play around with him here. It's a six run lead at this point. Got to attack hitters, even if you give up a solo shot. Swung on, belted. That's back there. That ball is gone. A massive home run. His second of the year, and they're chipping away. It's 7 2. With a low 90s fastball, you have to live on the edges and hit your spots. If you don't, you'll get hit hard. Really good swing there. Patient, waited for it. It was like BP all over again. One out, base is empty. And now the batter is Carson Kelly. One run across in the frame so far. Bottom half of inning number two. That one 95 to finish him off. The center fielder, number eight. So the batting order turns Matt. over. And next up for the Tigers, Veerling. Matt Veerling. Bounce to the right. Mendick. Over to first. And the inning is over. Solo shot for Detroit this inning. It's now a 7-2 ball game. You're watching Major League Baseball exclusively on the show. There's Ben Attendee to start it off. Ben Attendee, the former First round pick, Golden ben Spikes Award winner. Here comes a pitch. That one hit to right. Perez drifts towards it, makes the catch, and there's one gone. Maybe caught that one off the end just a little bit. Couldn't quite barrel it up enough to really drive it. So up next for Chicago, Corey Jolts. It's interesting he plays kind of a, a power spot defensively, but runs pretty well. So when you're looking at that position, you're not expecting someone that has maybe above average speed, but he does. And I think that skill set really upgrades the position because when you have that kind of speed, it makes the whole team that much better. And there's That's ball wrong. four. Ball four. Take your base. 
What about him playing another position on defense, one that would require a little more range? Absolutely, and I think if push came to shove where they had to make a, a move during a game, it'd surprise a lot of people. You might even be able to put him in center field. And the pitch. Just missed. Ground ball left side could be two. Looks to second. Double play. And that'll do it for the inning. Three up, three down for him there. We move on to the bottom of inning number three. White Sox seven, Tigers two. Wenzel Perez digs Whoever's in Tiger. now. The right fielder. And he walked him. Leading up for the Tigers. The Man at first, and now the DH, Riley Green. Green. The White Sox leading by five here in the last half of the third. Two balls. And a pitch out, but nothing going on. Though Chris, through the early stages, he hasn't been very efficient in terms of the pitch count. He's going to need to get some quick outs if he's going to get deeper into this game. Fouls one off. Two and two. It is interesting, though, when you consider the way the game is run now, doesn't even matter that much if your starter doesn't go. Runner takes off. Pitch misses. Throw. Save. Chris, his wheels were the difference maker on that play. Just got in there. Yeah, with StatCast's help, we see his top speed on this stolen base, and that's a big number. I mean, man, he really made his athleticism work for him on that one. And ball you, four to a board. Boom, do you think you could draw a walk in the bigs if we gave you enough no at bats? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think that if they gave yeah, the pitcher a full scouting report on me, yes, I think I could draw a walk. No outs, runners at first and second. That's a laser base hit. They won't test it here. Base is loaded, no outs. Here's Gio Urshela. Out to short. Off balance beat. There's one. And a run scores on the double play. It's always great when you can add a run, but in this situation with the bases loaded, double play is kind of a rally killer. So two down now, and here is Colt Keith. And a pitch. Huh. Two outs with a runner at third. And that one a little below the knees. The count now two and two. Good spot there, but didn't get the strike at the knees and doesn't seem too convinced by the call out there on the mound as he tries to get a better sense of the umpire strike zone. Two outs on the ground to the left, and it goes just foul. Got him. Good job at damage control right there. So one run on one hit, no errors, and a runner left. Three innings complete. White Sox seven, and the Tigers three. Danny Mendick Leading will hit next. The second baseman, Danny Mendick.
the one two that's inside really good take especially with two strikes and another ball three and two three two now that one to first and he takes it himself for the out. Up next for the White Sox, the right fielder, Tommy Pham. Tommy Pham steps to the plate for the White Sox. Bases empty, one away. Top half of inning number four. Oh. Next offering misses. Two balls and a strike. Comes up empty. That's strike two. He can live up in the zone all game if hitters will chase it. That's just too much velocity. Hitters got to look down in the zone. That one just missing inside. Three balls, two strikes. Close pitch there, and he's kind of wondering where it missed. You know, getting a feel for each umpire's strike zone is something that pitchers and hitters really have to think about and work on from game to game and sometimes from a bat to a bat. And a foul ball, he stays alive. One down, base is empty. Deep drive down the line. Foul ball. Good battle here. About to be the eighth pitch of the at bat. Come on and miss. Struck him out. He battled for a long time, but it finishes with a strikeout. You can't be mad at yourself after an at-bat like that one. Thought it was a pretty good pitch. Top of the strike zone. We're seeing more fastballs in that location. Hitters, especially with two strikes, have to be ready to pull the trigger. In the air, left field down the line. Malloy moving under this one. He makes the grab, and that is that. Justin Henry Malloy getting ready to hit. The wide, the kick, and the one two. On the ground, right side. He'll do it himself. And one gone in the fourth. As they get the leadoff man. The shortstop. Zach McKinstry. Zach McKinstry up now for the Tigers. The White Sox leading by four. We're here in the bottom of the fourth. Swings and blasts one deep to left center. Benintendi going back. And it's a one hopper off the wall. Should be extra bases. Now around second, going for third. Not in time. He's safe. Having a really nice game here. That's his second extra base hit. Put a really nice balanced swing on it. And when you can rope one into the gap like that, you're thinking extra bases from the first couple of steps out of the box. And he'll feel real good about that one. Could be a chance here for them to start clawing back into this ballgame. Carson Kelly up now for the Tigers. And a pitch. And he hits a ground ball right ball. side. And that's just foul. The pitch. Foul ball still a one and two count. Stays alive. One and two now. Swings through that one. It's a strikeout. 
Well, that high four-seam fastball, it's become such a staple as a strikeout pitch over the years. And what's so tough as a hitter is that you see it extremely well. The problem is the velocity and spin rate just happens to jump by you. You expand your zone, you don't stay tall on the backside, and you're really not even able to make contact. If you do, many times it's a pop-up. One two now. That's foul off to the right side. Keeps the AB going. One two. On the ground and foul ball. Two outs. That one in the dirt and it's two and two. Out to short. DeYoung throws to first in time. Inning over. Tigers leave one. Deficit remains at four. It's 7 3. So digging in, Luis Robert. So here in the three spot, Chris, a hitter, low average, but high slug. Well, one thing he's going to lean on are the metrics. He's exit. Oh, now this one's high and deep. Way back there. On its way. Gone. That was blasted to the moon. His second home run of the game. It's 8-3. Singy, the ball is jumping off his bat. Yes, it is. Tons of loud contact. Man, it's been impressive. They thought he could blow a high fastball by him, but he was ready for it. Look at how quickly he jumped on that pitch. Paul DeYoung now at the plate. Pitch misses, and a count two and one. You know, these White Sox really impressing me with the quality of their bats in this one. It's been fun getting a chance to see them go to work. It looked to me like they really wanted to get to the starter early, get him out of the game before he settles in, so I'd say mission accomplished. Swing and a line drive, base hit out of the center field. He was all over that one. Good extension on that swing. Took the pitch on the outside part of the plate and drove it up the middle. He let it travel just enough. So now it's the White Sox DH. Lennon Sosa. This one drilled to left. No doubt about it as they add on more. Gone. A gigantic blast. It's their second home run of the inning, and they add a pair. It's 10-3. That's their fourth home run of the game. They can't stop, and they won't stop hitting home runs in this one, Boog. They're clearly feeding off of each other at the dish. Looks like this guy was looking out over the plate, but he was ready to turn on the inside fastball. So direct to the pitch. Absolutely blasted out of this ballpark. Pitcher on now, Tarek Skubal. Hasn't pitched in the last three days. Ben Intendi to the plate. Next pitch is outside. The lefty fires. Gets him to chase after that one. Well, and those hitters count sometimes can be a little too aggressive, and a good pitcher will play off of that. He's got to get a better pitch to hit. And that's off the inside edge. And now it's three and two. Swings and misses. Struck him out.
And up next for Chicago, Corey Jones. Corey Jones. Drilled out towards left center field. That's well struck. Malloy raging back towards the wall. And that ball is out of here. That one felt good. Their third home run of the inning. And they add a run. It's 11 3. That's their fifth homer of the game. Man, they're all getting into the action. It's starting to feel like a home run derby up here. Well, not every home run is a majestic blast off the bat. And even though he hit it pretty well, it was anything but a sure thing to get out. But today, the conditions were right. He got just enough of it. And I think the backspin really helped that thing carry. Here's Corey Lee. Outside low, two and one. Four runs already in the frame, and we're at the top of the fifth. And there's a foul ball. Hit in the air, center field. Hauls it in, two away. Now that second base. Danny. Two outs, base is empty. And next to hit for the Sox, Danny Mendick. And now the lefty. That misses the zone. Three and one. Three one, and he couldn't come up with it. One of the things about that two out walk, the base runner over at first base is going to have a very aggressive secondary lead. So a ball down the line or into the gap will produce a two out RBI, and those are the best. That is, if you are the offensive side of it. High fly ball, shallow right field. Perez drifts towards it, makes the grab, and that's the inning. White Sox going with a new arm, Garrett Crochet. Well, he's got electric stuff coming out of the pen. His strikeout rate, though, is through the roof so far this season. Digging in is the switch inning outfielder, Wenzel Perez. The right fielder, Wenzel. Clearly down in this ball game, and you can't look at the deficit and try to get it all back in one swing. It's got to come one at bat at a time and even shrink it down smaller, pitch to pitch. Make that guy on the mound work to get you out. Kicks and deals. Gets a piece there. We'll do it again. The wind and the pitch. Struck him out without a swing. Called strike three and a fastball up in the zone. Here's Riley Green. The 1-1 one -one is fouled off. The White Sox up big in this one. Last half of inning number five. Left hand batter waits. Hard hit left side. Whips it across. All that for the fifth inning moving along two quick outs. Here's Mark Canna. The wind of the pitch. And a swing and a miss. The high fastball, particularly for young hitters, can be hard to lay off of because you see it so well at eye level, but it's really hard to catch up and get that top hand to work on time. And now two and two. Up. 
popped up. Has a beat on it. And that is the third out of the inning. Three up, three down for Detroit. Still 11 to 3. Andrew Vaughn steps to the plate for the White Sox. The first baseman, number 25, Andrew Vaughn. Swing and a miss, struck him out. And that's strikeout number 100 on the year. Third time he struck out in this one, and definitely an individual performance you want to flush. He just hasn't looked very comfortable up there. Just one of those days. But when you're still winning the ball game, at least you can focus on doing your part to maintain that lead and getting that W. So up next, Luis Robert. He's already homered twice, the last one back of the fifth. Just seems like he can't miss right now, seeing the baseball as well as anyone on the field. Now, I know the odds are against him, but who's going to bet against this guy right now? Off the mark there, and it's two and one. Pulls that one foul. These hitters like this that have so much power, look forward to seeing them hit the ball a long way. But if you're in the stands, or you're in a broadcast booth, or you're a writer, better keep your eye on the game. Just indecisive in that at bat. He couldn't commit to the slider. Tried to sit in between. Just not able to put the bat on the ball. And the batter will be the shortstop. Paul DeYoung. And he deals. Battling here as he fouls it away. And they'll do it again. The pitch. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. No runs, no hits, no errors. We go to the bottom half of inning number six, and the five, six, seven slots do up. It's the White Sox 11 and the Tigers 3. Gior Shella steps in. Tiger, the third baseman. Ball to strike. Swing and a miss. Nice changeup. Well, at that velocity, if that's all you're seeing, 88, you can handle that all day long. That's what you get in batting practice. But off the velocity of the fastball, that is a very tough pitch to adjust to. Wouldn't chase that time. Okay. The punch out there. One gone here. This guy will throw any pitch in any count. 3 2. He goes off speed. Now gets the out. Second baseman. Cole. Colt Keith, Keith, the next to hit. Keith swinging it much better this season in away games than here at home. One down, base is empty. Swing and a miss. Looked off balance that time. That pitch started in and ended up on the outside edge. Just changing planes and very difficult, especially for a left-handed hitter to track. And that's down, a base hit. So a man aboard now with one away. Nice line drive to the pull side. Met it out front, but just stayed through it nice enough and ripped it into the outfield. And next to hit for Detroit, Justin Henry Malloy. Kicks and fires. That one way inside. Got the bat going too soon. It's strike two. Two, two strikes.
the pitch. This one in the air right field makes his way towards it tracks it down for the out and there's two down. Now batting the shortstop. Man at first there's the shortstop at the play Zach McKinstry the Tigers with a lot of ground to make up here in the bottom of the sixth. This ball's chopped on the ground. Vaughn. He takes it himself to the bag, and that'll do it. And now here is Lennon Sosa. The wine of the pitch. Gets a piece and stays alive. Popped up. Keith hauls it in and there's one away. Good hard fastball up in the zone right there. They look really good coming in, but so hard to get on top of as a hitter. Benintendi up here. One down, base is empty. On the ground to short, McKinstry. Fires across the diamond, and two away to start the seven. Well, I believe we talk about how the ball is coming out of a pitcher's hand. The way it comes out of his hand as an infielder, wow, really impressive. So up next for Chicago, Corey Jolts. Gets the call, and it's one and two. Well, two outs and a chance to put up a zero on the scoreboard here, and that's not something that's come easy for this staff in this one. And another ball. And here it comes. Just misses the mark outside the zone. Didn't get the result he wanted, but that's a nice pitch right there. Swing and a miss, and he struck him out. And the White Sox go quietly. Nothing doing for the White Sox. But still in command, it's 11-3. And now the catcher comes up to him. Carson Kelly. The pitch. So a foul ball makes it one and two. Here comes a pitch. Fouls it off, still one and two. And a pitch. And a swing and a miss. And that's the first out. Stood absolutely no chance on that slider right there. And I don't mean to laugh, but that's a tough one. I mean, pretty much a perfect strikeout pitch. I mean, it looks like a fastball middle in, kind of has cutter action, and it just bunches you up to whereas you can't get your hands through and the barrel to it. And not much you can do unless you recognize the spin early and you spit on it. And it drops in. So they get a man aboard with a one-out single. Didn't exactly square that one up, but sometimes you don't have to. Flared no, it out there and got it to drop for the base hit. I think he got it off the handle just a little bit, but the bat held up for him enough to get something behind that swing. Next pitch misses inside. Two and one. The White Sox up big in this one. Here at the bottom of the seven. Wouldn't chase that time. This is one of those situations defensively where you can't try to do too much. You've got to make sure that you feel the ball cleanly and get one out first. It's going to be tough to get two with this kind of speed in the batter's box. And that's ball four. 
He's making things difficult for himself right now out there on the mound. But, you know, his confidence should still be high enough to get out of this. But he's going to have to buckle down right here. So one out with two aboard. Next is the Tigers DH. Riley Green. In the air on the infield. And the infield fly is called. The first baseman, number 21, Mark Canna. So first and second with two outs. And next will be the Tiger cleanup hitter, Mark Canna. First and second, two down. And another ball. Good spot for the hitter. Definitely has the advantage in this count with runners on. Look for him to be aggressive on this next pitch. Two on, two outs. And that one is inside. Pitch is in there. And the count is filled up. Two outs. Too low, ball four. And he's walked another. The bat. Third baseman. Now the third baseman, Gio Urshela. At the belt and fires. Swing and a high fly ball out there towards left field. And Ben Intendi able to make the grab. And that'll do it. So the Tigers get a new arm from the pen. Shelby Miller. He has a great slider with tons of movement. Corey Lee digs in now. The catcher. Corey Lee. And the right hander deals. And a foul ball. Swing and a miss. Couldn't hit the fastball at the knees. So digging in, Danny Mendick. The White Sox up big in this one, and we're in the top of the eighth. Next pitch misses, and that's ball two. Activity in the bullpen for Detroit. Tyler Holton appears to be getting ready, and I'm sure he's feeling some nerves. This would be his major league debut. Olsen warming up as well. Two balls and a strike. Here comes. That one fouled off. Right-handed reliever. Hacks and misses. It's a strikeout. Chance to strike out the side now. You talk about the benefits, the advantages of relievers who can come in and get the swing and miss, whether it's inherited runners or maybe a little jam that they get into themselves. Knowing that they can miss the bat, tell you what, that's huge and can change the ball game. Two down, nobody on. And that one clips the corner. Two outs. High fly ball out to center field. Nice grab on the run. And that is that. Tanner Banks will take over here. And he's been hit pretty hard at times this year, so... He's looking for better. Right now, giving up more than a hit per inning. Now it's the second baseman, the Colt second baseman. Keith. 
The wide to kick the pitch. Oh. And a big swing and a miss. One ball, two straight. Another one, two. Spoils the two strike pitch, and he'll see another. The one two. And oh. misses inside. Three. Swings through it, and that's a strikeout. He's really good hitting the baseball the other way, so credit the pitcher for having him out in front of that pitch. Clearly, he had him fooled. Here's the left fielder, Justin Henry Malloy. Swing and a miss. One and two. The Tigers with a lot of ground to make up here, the bottom half of the eighth inning. Cuts and misses. It's a strikeout. Toughest pitch to hit. Fastball on the outer oh, black. Man, sometimes you just got to tip your cap. Now at the plate, Zach McKinstry. Next offering is in for a strike. Movement for the White Sox in their bullpen. Steven Wilson preparing to come on if needed. And now it's one and two. Keeps the at bat going with a foul ball. Got it by him for the K. Andrew Vaughn steps to the plate for the White Sox. The first baseman, number 25. Andrew Vaughn. Righty delivers. Right through there for a strike. Careful. Swings and misses on the fastball up in the zone for the strikeout. Here's the center fielder, Luis Robert. With this kind of lead, he can swing freely, try to hit the ball out of the park, do what he loves to do. Right-hander kicks, deals, and that one fouled off. Right side, settles under it, hauls it in, and there's two away. Now batting, shortstop. Paul DeYoung. Two outs, bases empty. Paul DeYoung steps to the plate for the White Sox. Two down, nobody on. Here at the top of the ninth. Late on that fastball. Well, he just threw that fastball by him, elevated, and if you're not looking up in that location, very difficult to catch up to, especially with that velocity. Out to short. And he beats the throw. He's safe. Tough play and a nice backhand stop. Had to be perfect with the exchange and throw to get the out. But it looked like he had to dig in there a little deeper, like he was trying to get a split finger grip or something. Close play, but that little extra time on the transfer made all the difference. Two outs, runner at first. Lennon Sosa steps to the plate for the White Sox. And a one-two again. Up the middle, McKinstry. They take the force out, and the inning is over. 
So one hit is all they get. And 9-1-2 scheduled to lead off the bottom of the ninth. It's the White Sox 11 and the Tigers.